Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Member Tour webinar on RC's upcoming Member Tour to Egypt in the footsteps of the Holy Family that is scheduled for November 5th to 21st of this year, 2021. Uh, joining us today is Managing Director um, of Egypt Toy Travel and the Tour Director for RC's Member Tour, Mr. Hisham El Sabi. Um, unfortunately, due to some technical issues, RC's Deputy Director for Research and Programs, Dr. Yasmin El Shazli, may not be able to join us today. Uh, there will be a Q&A session that will take place at the end of the webinar, and please make sure to use the Q&A button and not the chat button to ask your questions. Um, so Hisham, if you want to go ahead and take it away. Hi, welcome everybody. And it's a pleasure to meet you all and to have the chance to introduce to you Egypt through the Holy Family trip, going and having a journey through the Christian Coptic Pharaonic history, and it's a journey through the Nile River, as we are having all of our properties just going by the Red Sea and going by the Nile. My name is Hisham El Sabai. As Rebecca introduced, I'm going to be your tour director for the whole trip, and I'm going to be the person who wants to ask all the questions and just to be the support for all the tour starting from the first day to the last day. Just to me, I decided to have a visual presentation for you starting from the first day till the end of the trip. And just to give you the chance to have a visual for the tour itself, for the sites and for the hotels and how it's gonna proceed from the first day. And I would love at the end after we finish to have all your questions. What do you have in mind? What's your precautions regarding buses, regarding safety precautions as for COVID, the PCR test? and all what's related to our tour. So I'm gonna start now sharing my screen. Just a second. As I said, we're gonna start having some visual for the whole tour. Starting day by day, starting from the first day, which is November 5th, we're going to be arriving to Cairo. Upon arrival to Cairo airport, you will be having a person from our company just meeting you with a sign just to help you out with all your procedures like the luggage collection, the passport control. For all the people who are holding an American passport, they will have no problem for the visa because it can be obtained at the cost of $25, and it's gonna take like a couple of minutes with the assistance of our representative at the airport. Then taking you to the hotel where we're gonna stay for the next six nights. We are be having a dinner at the first day, just having a group dinner all together to be introduced to each other and to know what will be going on for the next days till the end of the trip. The Marriott Hotel, as you can see, it's located in Gezira Island. It's downtown. It's centrally located. It's overlooking from the other side of the Nile, the Egyptian Museum and Tahrir Square, and most of the landmarks of downtown Cairo. As you can see, the hotel is overlooking the Nile River, and we will be having a great opportunity during all of our hotels to stay by the Nile River. That's why it's going to be a journey through the Nile River like what the Holy Family did. Moving along, here we're gonna be having always visuals by our map. Moving from a place to a place, I will introduce the map through this red arrow with the writing over it, just to have you visual what will be going on. At our first day in Cairo, which is November 6th, we will be going north to the Delta area of Egypt, just covering the upper part by having the first visit where the Holy Family is having the stone with Jesus' footprints, as you can see from the picture. Sakha is a very luxurious place. It's a very nice place to visit and to explore how they started from over there. Once we move from Sakha, we'll be having the opportunity to go to St. Abanob Church from there. We will be having the chance to visit a lot of the churches and monasteries through this trip accompanied with a lot of pharaonic history as well. Moving from there, we will go to Tel Basta or Bubastis, where we will have some pharaonic statues and archeological places. 
from there, it's gonna take us like a couple of hours going in the morning from Cairo to Sakha, and then like 30 minutes to the church, having an hour there, and then moving for another 30 minutes till we reach Tel Basta, ending up by Cairo. All of our driving days, it's gonna be done through a big bus. It's a 50 seats bus with a bathroom inside it. So you will be having a room. Yeah, and if there is almost two seats for every person to sit if we reach 25 people for this trip, and we're not gonna exceed that number. So we will be having the chance not to be seated in only one seat. You're having your own seat and there is another free seat just beside you to leave your stuff for it for the long drives as we are having a long bus drives through the first five or six days. Then back to Cairo same day, we'll be having dinner at the hotel. Our hotel, we are having six different outlets. So every day we will experience a different outlet with a different cuisine. Just to let you know all the cuisines that we can offer on that first day. The next day, which is November 7th, we will be having the opportunity to go in Cairo, but we're not gonna have a long drive as we are within the Cairo governorate. We are having like 45 minutes drive to reach Mostorot or what they called El Mahma. That's where Jesus had to have created a spring in which Mary bathed him and washed his clothes. And you can see from the picture, the springs that we will be experiencing. From there, we will be having the chance to go to another place nearby, which is called Matareya Heliopolis. This is where the tree of the Virgin is. This is where the Holy Family rested beneath this tree. From there, when we go back to Cairo, we'll be having a chance to have a lunch at one of the local restaurants, just to experience a different cuisine, which is our aim for every day for the tour. Back to the hotel, having a dinner in the hotel, in a different outlet from the first day and to be ready for the next day in the morning. Because of our hotel is located centrally and sometimes we'll be back to the hotel by five, you will be having the chance to explore the area where the hotel is, which is called El Gezira Aran Old Zamalek. That's a very unique place for most of the Egyptian residents, the luxury families, they usually live in this area. And it's a lot of, of walking distance in these places, shops, to explore and it's very safe to walk around and explore the area around the hotel in each day when we come back. And then we will be ready for the next day, which is November the 8th, going northwest to Wadi Natron. Wadi Natron is where there is three monasteries to explore over there. This is where the Holy Family moved to Wadi Natron and recorded over there. We have three monasteries we'll be able to visit in Wadi Natron during this day. And we will be having the chance to have lunch nearby in a place called Ain Al Hamra. It's overlooking a lake called Natron Lake. Driving back to Cairo almost by 5 p.m., still have the chance to explore the city and we'll be having a dinner at the hotel and get ready for the next day as we are still visiting in Cairo. This day is full of new stuff for the Coptic part, which is the old Cairo. Old Cairo is where all the Coptic churches is, as you can see, we will be exploring the hanging church, the St. George's church and the Coptic museum. And we'll be honored just to have the lecture by Dr. Nicholas Horner supporting to us. Moving to the only open synagogue in Egypt to tourists or the people to visit. That's the rest of all the synagogues that were in Egypt in the old days. And it's visited over there, as you can see. Going back to the hotel, same day, just to explore the area and having, before going back to the hotel, we will proceed to the church of St. Marcos or Abu Safin, which is the saint of the two swords. Returning to the hotel and we will be having a great opportunity just to be able to have a reception at the RC, at the American Research Center itself inside. And then from there, we'll be having dinner inside the research center, accompanied by all the participants and the people from the American Research Center in Egypt. Heading back to the hotel to get ready for the first pharaonic day that we start exploring and going in Cairo, doing a very exclusive visit 
to the pose of the Sphinx by Dr. Zahi Hawass. This place is very exclusive for our group, as you can see from the picture on the left side, because this is not for the normal tourists to visit, all the people visit from the outside. And we are having the opportunity to go inside and to have it with Dr. Zai Hawass himself for 45 minutes lecture about the Sphinx and the area of the pyramids and the worker village and all the places that he have discovered in the last years. Moving from there, we will be having the chance to explore the Great Pyramids of Giza, having a panoramic view picture for the pyramids at the one on the left side, and having also the chance by a special ticket to be able to enter the Great Pyramids of Giza. And from there, we will be having lunch nearby in the area. Originally, it was supposed to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum as long as until today, we have no information whether it's gonna be open by November or not, but we are having a plan B in case the Grand Egyptian Museum is not operated by the time of our tour, we will be having the chance to do the National Museum of Egyptian Civilizations. And if you were familiar by what happened three months ago, there were the golden Pharaoh parade that moving the royal mummies from the old Egyptian Museum to the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. So we will be having the chance to visit the new museum, as you can see from the pictures, and to explore the royal mummies with a totally different display by what was happening in the old Egyptian museum. From there, we will go back to the hotel and rest, and we will always buy the tour. When we end our tour, we will have a chance to rest and refresh for two or three hours before either having dinner in the hotel or having dinner outside like today we will be having the chance to walk around and have a dinner in a local restaurant to explore the Egyptian cuisine and to just leave Cairo for the last day and get ready for moving by bus through all over Egypt, starting by going to the Red Sea. And this is gonna be our first drive out of Cairo going east to be able to go to the area of the Red Sea and explore a lot of places like the two famous monasteries in the mountains, St. Paul Monastery and St. Anthony Monastery. After finishing and visiting both monasteries, we will be spending the night by the Red Sea in the Coral Sea Hotel. As you can see, you will be having the chance as we will be at the hotel around 4 p.m. We will be having the chance to you can have a swim in the sea or in the swimming pool and get ready for the next day, moving west where we're gonna go and start our journey through the Nile as the Holy Family did. Going to Minya, we will explore our hotel first for the coming three nights, which is the Grand Aton Hotel. It's also by the Nile, as I said in the beginning, all of our properties is gonna be through the Nile River. We're gonna stay there for three nights, exploring the first day, a place called Bahnasa, which was the first stop for the Holy Family in Middle Egypt. When we say Middle Egypt, we are talking about all of the coming days until we reach Luxor. We call this part Middle Egypt. Spending the night at the hotel and having dinner at the hotel as well. In all of our bus drives and daily drives, you will find in your itinerary that there is lunch box included. And it's gonna be different in each day with the specific requirements from all the clients and the dietary requirements as well. Going in the next day in the morning, we start our journey by doing Gabal el tir or the mountain of the birds, and having a visit to the church of the Lady of the Palm, as you can see in the picture. Moving from there, we go back to the pharaonic and archaeological parts, which is doing Ashmonain and Tunal Gabal in the area of Minya. We are still in Minya. And then after doing the visit to the pla two places, we will have an opportunity to go back at the hotel around five as well, having a couple of hours for refreshment and relaxing and enjoying the sunset by the Nile River and having our dinner at the hotel to start a new day with a new part, which is one of the most important part in the pharaonic area, which is Tel Al Amarna, where Ikhnaten, where by visiting Tel Al Amarna, after we finish Tel Al Amarna, we're gonna visit Beni Hassan tombs, and as you can see from the colors over there, 
and it's the only tombs on the east bank of the Nile due to the flood of the Nile. Going back to the hotel, same day around 5 a.m., having our dinner at the hotel and getting ready to leave early morning driving to Suhaq, where we're gonna visit Dir al Mahraq on the way, then spending the night and moving from there to visit the first area for the American Research Center project, which is Atribus. Atribus, we're gonna be having a lecture by Dr. Marcus Muller, who was taking care of the work on that area. From there, we're gonna move to Suhag, as you can see, visiting the Red Monastery, which the work was done as well by the RC. And as you can see from the picture on the left side, they did an amazing job on the Red Monastery. And we will be having a lecture by the people who were there and by Dr. Nucleus Warner. From there, we're gonna go to the Wynet Monastery for a brief visit. And we will be having the chance to have lunch inside the monastery with the pub over there. And it's gonna take care of our day until we reach back to the hotel where we're gonna overnight. In the hotel, it's called House of Life. House of Life is it's located in Obaidus and it's overlooking the temple of City First. As you can see, we'll move to Obaidus to visit the Obaidus where the City First temples, Ramses, third temples and the Osiren, and we'll start having some archaeological area for the coming days. Moving from Obaidus, we're gonna do the Obaidus visit in the early morning, and it's gonna be almost exclusive, the whole temple only for our group. Moving from there, we will go to Dandara. Dandara, as you can see from the picture on the right side, that work was all done in the last years, just to be able to have this fascinating colors, as you can see from the walls and the blue colors on it. It used to be black from the old days, but they did a lot of work on that temple just to be able to see it as it is. Leaving Dandara around 3 p.m., arriving to the magic city of Luxor around 4 p.m., just checking in in our Steigenberger Nile Palace Hotel, overlooking the Nile, as you can see from the hotel and our rooms. This is the view, the mountains on the left side picture, that's the mountains where the West Bank of Luxor and where all the monuments and the treasures were found and most of the temples and the tombs are still there. Then we're gonna spend the night having dinner before and having the same idea. For the coming three nights, we are spending the nights on the hotel. And with the hotel is really centrally located in Luxor, and you are still having the chance to explore the city. We are not having long tours. Our tours, as you can see, is gonna start at 8 a.m., be back to the hotel by 12.30, just to have lunch and then some rest, having a visit, and then you have the rest of the day for yourself. Next day in the morning, we're gonna have our first visit to the Gorna, Draabunaga, and Mena tomb. And as you can see from the left side picture, this is where most of the tombs are located in the West Bank of Luxor. Going back to the hotel to have our lunch, have some rest, and then go to the magnificent temple of Karnak. And we will be able to see the Khonso, an RC lab where the RC were working. And they did a great job over there to be able and give us the chance to see it. That day in the evening, we will have you have your own chance to have the first dinner on your own. And we will be having some recommendations for some places for you to visit. And then back spending the night for preparing yourself for the second visit to the West Bank. Exploring first thing in the morning, we're gonna do the Habu Temple. And as you can see, the Habu Temple, it's a huge temple that we'll be able to do it in a couple of hours, moving from there to the famous place of the Valley of the Kings, just to be able to have our special tickets to visit the Tutankh Amun tomb on the left side and the Ramses VI tomb. This is one of the two or the best two tombs in the Valley of the Kings, and they are usually having special tickets to be able to enter there. From there, we'll be having the chance to have lunch in a place called El Marsam, and El Marsam is a very nice small restaurant by the countryside on the West Bank. 
we're having most of it, it's Egyptian cuisine. From there, we're gonna cross by boat to the East Bank again, to our hotel, just to save time from driving, having some rest. And then before that, we can just go to the Valley of the Queens, explore the magnificent Nefertari tomb, which is as well having a very special ticket and not all the people can go there to visit. Ending our day by doing the Luxor temple on the left side after having some rest at the hotel, followed by the Luxor museum, then back to the hotel for our dinner, or let's say it's our last dinner in Luxor. From there, next day in the morning, we're gonna fly back to Cairo by Egypt Air. Our flight is gonna be by noon, spending the night at the intercontinental city stars where there is a very big mall in that area. It's called City Stars Malls, where you can have the chance to have some souvenirs for yourself before going back to Cairo. And then the next day in the morning, you will be able to fly back home and give us your feedback about our country and about our trip. And before that, we are just having some flexibility just to encourage the people to join us for this lovely trip. We did some changes on the itinerary that you had for the payment policy and the cancellation policy. And as you can see, when you will be signing in, you will be having a 20% deposit upon confirmation. And then the balance is gonna be 60 days, which is September 12th. You can start paying the rest of your money. The cancellation policy, as you can see, and then we have a very special part at the end of this slide that in case any of the clients is having a COVID before arrival to Cairo, we will only need uh, uh, documents from the lab that they got infected and then a full refund will be done back to you in minus the internal flight penalty, which is both $50 per person. Also, if there is any closing of the borders in the States or in Egypt, the same will be done a full refund minus the internal flight penalty. And that's all for the night. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And I would love to have all your questions and I'm ready for all the answers, whatever comes your, to your mind, I would love to share it with me and we can answer all your questions. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Hisham. Um, so next up, we do have uh, Dr. Yasmin El Shazli joining us, and again, she is um, the RC's deputy director for research and programs. Uh, so Yasmin, if you want to go ahead and take it away, um, I would like to welcome all those attending our uh, webinar today. I am very pleased to be with you. Finally, <laughs> I have a, I had I had a very very terrible internet connection. So I'm very pleased that I managed to join. Uh, and I'm happy to talk to you a little bit about our upcoming members tour in November. This upcoming members, members tour in the footsteps of the Holy Family is a very special tour that includes uh, many very interesting sites, several of which are not offered by other travel agency are not, and are not frequently visited by tourists. The Holy Family is said to have fled Egypt beyond the reach of King Herod, the Roman appointed King of Judea. Upon arriving in Egypt, the Holy Family moved locations very frequently so as to avoid the reach of Herod's spies. In total, there are 25 locations throughout the country where it is believed that the Holy Family has passed or sought refuge during their three and a half years in hiding. Let me share my screen. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, so the Holy Family, uh, the journey of the Holy Family in Egypt uh, is of great importance to the Coptic Church, and it is a common practice for church groups to visit sites along the exact path that the Holy Family is said to have taken. What makes this tour particularly special is its timing. In its effort to develop religious tourism, the Egyptian government has recently made great efforts to incorporate the trail of the Holy Family into the global religious tourism map. Millions of pounds have been allocated for the development of the stops along the path. The development work estimated at 60 million Egyptian pounds aims to create or upgrade tourist facilities and services along the path. The restoration of all, our, all the archeological sites located on the Holy Family's path has been completed. Egypt is also preparing a file to register the Holy Family Trail on the UNESCO list of intangible cultural heritage. The Trail of the Holy Family from Sakha to, to, Nadi, to Wadi Natrun, Sakha is here, and here's Wadi Natrun, but the, the, and here's uh, the trail they followed, um, is recorded in the vision of Theophilus. You will get to visit several sites along the trail Trail, including sites in the Delta and Wedi Natrun that are not typically visited by tourists. Wedi Natrun is an extremely important center for the development of Coptic monastic tradition. There you will visit several monasteries that Hisham has mentioned already, all which lie in a desert depression 25 meters below sea level in between Cairo and Alexandria. So, after the, uh, after the Arab conquest, Wadi Natrun became the official residence of the Coptic Patriarch. You will begin your trip with the uh, Baramus, which is the, uh, the oldest of the surviving four monasteries in Wadi Natrun. The monastery today contains five churches, that of the Holy Virgin, uh, St. Theodore, St. George, St. John the Baptist, and, and St. Michael. You will then proceed to Deir Amba Beche. Uh, the monastery is named after its, uh, its uh, patron saint who went to Wedi Natrun after a divine revelation. Saint Beche died in uh, the Fayum and the monastery that bears his name was only constructed in the seventh century. It contains four churches in, ad in addition to the main one built in honor of the patron saint. Saint Bichet's remains were taken to the monastery in the ninth century and remain there today. You will also get to visit Bahnasa, Gabal al and Dir al-Muharra, which are all holy family sites in Middle Egypt that are not frequently visited. Bahnasa was the first stop of the holy family in Middle Egypt, as Hishem has already mentioned. Local tradition claims that the family took refuge at the site. There you will visit the Church of the Virgin Mary, where there is a well that, according to tradition, Jesus played by and planted a piece of wood that grew into a fruitful tree. From Bahnasa, the Holy Family crossed the Nile um, uh, at Samalut and went to Gabalatir. Um, this is a site where Mary, according to tradition, feared for the safety of Jesus because a large rock threatened to fall on their boat from the mountain overlooking the river. Jesus is said to have extended his hand and prevented its falling. His imprint remained on the rock and the Church of the Lady of the Palm was built in commemoration of the visit. This church is one of the most important stops of the Holy Family in Egypt and it hosts an annual pilgrimage to the site that is shared by both Copts and Muslims. I just tried to highlight some of the sites on the Holy Family Trail that you will be visiting that are not on the common tourism track. There are also a few sites that are unique to our tour that are not part of the Holy Family Trail, some in which RC has carried out important projects, such as the Monastery of St. Anthony, which was founded in the fourth century, a few years after the death of the saint. This is one of the most beautiful monasteries in Egypt, largely because of its setting. It is nestled beneath the rugged mountains along the Red Sea coast and is surrounded by high walls of modern construction, over 10 meters high. The oldest part of the monastery is the Church of St. Anthony, 
which is built over his tomb. The wall paintings in the nave are of 12th and 13th century date. From 1996 to 1999, Arthi began conservation of the wall paintings in the church, which revealed extremely high quality paintings, which are among the best preserved and most complete Christian paintings from, the medieval, from medieval Egypt. Later phases of conservation and documentation work at the monastery began, began in 2004, following renovations at the church, which revealed the remains of an earlier church and monastic cells under the 14th century uh, church floor. Archaeological recording and conservation were carried out, and in 2008, a glass floor was installed over the conserved remains to display the space below the present day church. Another site that you will have the opportunity to visit is the monastery of St. Paul. At the foot of Al Khalzam mountain near Al Zafarana on the Red Sea, the monastery of St. Paul was founded in the fourth century, abandoned in the 15th century and recolonized in the 17th century. It is celebrated as the oldest Christian monastery in Egypt. The monastic buildings are centered around a cave where the hermit Paul is believed to have lived in seclusion for eight years. The cave also marks the spot where St. Anthony and St. Paul are believed to have met. The Church of St. Paul was built over the cave where the remains of St. Paul were buried. The wall paintings are among the earliest in Egypt, believed to date to the fourth century. The other churches in the monastery are dedicated to St. Macarius, the Holy Virgin, the, uh, Saint, and St. Michael. The latter is the largest and dates to the 17th century. From 1997 through 2005, uh, R.C. oversaw extensive conservation work at the Monastery of St. Paul. In 1997, work started with conservation of the mill building, refactory, and 18th century enclosure wall. In 2001, a larger project to conserve the entire church, its walls, and unique paintings began. The conservation work finished in 2005. You will also be going to Soheg, uh, where you will get to visit the Red Monastery, built in the fifth century and the heart of a large monastic community. It is a rare and beautiful example of extremely vibrant paintings in a monument from late antique Egypt. From 2002 to 2019, RC undertook its longest conservation project at the Red Monastery. Beginning in 2002, work began to reveal the magnificent painted surfaces of the church's sanctuary that were covered by layers of black soot. From 2015 to 2019, work then moved to the nave of the church where conservation of the nave walls commenced along with architectural conservation and site presentation. There you will uh, receive a lecture that Hisham already mentioned by the project director, Dr. Nicholas Warner. While in Soheg, you will also visit Athribis. Um, uh, uh, the, the city um, is the site of a temple built for the goddess uh, Repeat by Ptolemy the 15th uh, Caesarian and subsequent Roman emperors. South of this temple was an earlier temple by Tar uh, Ptolemy the Ninth, uh, Soter II. Uh, the project at the site is directed by Professor Christian Leitz of Tübingen University. In Luxor, uh, again, as you as we've already heard, you will visit the temple of Hansu. Hansu Temple is situated in the southwest corner uh, of the precinct of Amun-Ra at Karna. Um, it was built during the reign of Ramses III and dedicated to Hansu, son of Mut and Amun. The temple faces Luxor Temple, to which it is connected by an avenue of sphinxes that have recently been revealed in their entirety. Although the temple is relatively small, it is remarkably complete. It consists of a pylon, a court, a hypostyle hall, a bark shrine, and an ambulatory, and a number of chapels, including one at roof level. Almost all surfaces are decorated with both raised and sunk relief 
much of which has survived with intact colors. In 2008, RC initiated a new program of conservation at the site, which ended in 2018. RC's projects at the site funded by the US Agency of International Development took place within the framework of a variety of training programs or conservation field schools for local conservators. These field schools not only allowed conservators from the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities to gain crucial hands-on experience and build on their existing skills, but also supported the wide-scale conservation component of the project. Work primarily focused on the consolidation and treatment of surviving polychrome reliefs in six of the temples, 12 chapels. Additional project activities included limited restoration work on the exterior wall of the temple, structural improvements and consolidation for select areas of flooring that were in poor condition, and a photography of field school for two ministry inspectors. RC plans to prioritize the completion of, con of the conservation of this important monument starting in the fall of 2021 with full documentation using 3D laser scanning. The work is scheduled to continue for at least four years and will initially focus on structural repairs and consolidation, followed by the conservation of the remaining untreated polychrome painted surfaces and further training for local conservators and site managers. One of the highlights of the tour is a visit to the exquisite tomb of Nefertari located in the Valley of the Queens, a gorge in the hills along the western bank of Luxor. It was part of ancient Thebes and served as the burial site of the Queens and some royal children of the 19th and 20th dynasties. The tomb is one of the most beautiful in Egypt and is entirely painted with very vibrant, vibrant colors. It is so breathtaking that it has often been dubbed the Sistine Chapel of Egypt. Another highlight of the tour is a private visit of the Paws of the Sphinx on the Giza Plateau. Of course, as you all know, the Sphinx is the largest monolithic statue in the world and the oldest known monumental sculpture. There you will receive a lecture by Dr. Zehi Hawes and Dr. Mark Lehner. These were just some highlights of our tour. You can find more complete itinerary, itinerary for those who haven't already listened to Hisham on our website, rc.org. While you're in Egypt, I encourage you to visit a very special exhibition that RC is organizing at the Egyptian Museum in partnership with the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities and the American University in Cairo. The exhibition coincides and complements a three-day conference titled, titled Exalted Spirits, the Veneration of the Dead in Egypt Through the Ages, the same, which is the same title as the exhibition, and will cover the veneration of deceased figures in Egypt from the pharaonic period up to current times using the diverse evidence available in terms of texts, images, and lived traditions. Of course, artifacts highlighting the veneration of the Holy Family will feature very prominently in the exhibition. I hope I managed to give you an idea of some of the highlights of our tour, and I leave the floor to my colleagues. All right, well, thank you, Yasmin, for um that information that was a wonderful presentation. Um, so now I'd like to open up this part of the webinar for questions. Uh, as a reminder, please post your questions in the Q&A button and not in the chat. Um, and it looks like we do have some questions already. Um, and I believe this one for you is gonna be for you, Hisham, and it's from Catherine Moore. And she asks, currently a COVID test is required to return to the US. Will the tour facilitate participants getting tested for return? Hisham, you're on mute. You can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Just Catherine, for the COVID test you're asking about, before arrival to Egypt, you are required to have a negative PCR test done 96 hours before arrival. And before leaving Egypt, as long as the regulations until nowadays, you have to do another PCR test before leaving back to the States. And it's gonna be handled and you're gonna pay it here in Egypt and we're gonna be handle it from the lab guy who will come and do you the test and give you the, the certificate before leaving Egypt. 
That's for Castro. For Pat, where it looks like Cairo, can you get a COVID test that all airlines require before boarding return flight? Egypt is currently designated as a red zone. The COVID test, it's almost the same answer. You will be having the negative PCR test before arrival, and you will be handling a negative, a PCR test in Egypt before leaving back to the States. The situation here is Egypt, just to let you know, as an Egyptian living here, and Yasmin can also talk about this part, that we are having all the precautions for all the COVID tests inside restaurants, inside hotels, by the help of the government here, all the people, or most of the people, let's put it like that, like in the States, they are wearing their face masks in all the closed places and in the public areas. We are taking very good care of ourselves because most of the Egyptians, they are on the process of getting vaccinated. And within the coming three months, the percentage is gonna be much more higher for the vaccinated people. And regarding the safety precautions, for our tour specifically, if we're not talking about the whole country, if we're talking about only about our tour, as we said, we are having a huge bus with spacious space for every person just to have it for his own. We're going to provide face masks, sanitizers in all the buses, in the hotels, in the restaurants. And as long as we move, we are having all the safety precautions for COVID. And if you can have a better view for what's going on in Egypt now, we are living, we have to move, and we have to do it. And Yasmin can also help me about that if there is any additional to the information. I will talk about, for example, the, the conference that we're organizing uh, and the museum. <laughs> um, I, I know that everybody's required to wear a face mask inside uh, the museums in Egypt. And the, uh, the conference that we're organizing, for instance, uh, people need to be vaccinated to attend it. So their um, precautions are being taken. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, and it's. Uh, I think it's also very easy to get the uh, tested in Egypt. <laughs> the tests are readily available, uh, and uh, more and more people are getting vaccinated, which is also uh, may. So the safety in Egypt is increasing by the day. Okay, great. Thank you. It looks like we have another question from Bruce. Um, and he says, can we get help with flight reservations from the US to Cairo and back? Oh, definitely. We can do whatever you want here. We are here just to help with all the signing and the bookings and the air flights and everything. And we can guest you the best fare and deals from the world, the international airlines. Um, okay, great. Our next question is from Virginia, and she says, for those who are too old or disabled to take this trip, is there any chance of your doing an online tour with photos for several hundred dollars? I'm very interested, but cannot take such an active tour. We can do it for free. There is no need for the several hundred dollars. <laughs> I can add also that, for instance, on the uh, rc.org uh, website, we have uh, virtual tours of like St. Anthony. We have a virtual tour of St. Anthony, a uh, 3D scan. So uh, on our website, you can find some sites that you can visit virtually. Yes, that is a great point. We do offer a lot of virtual um, tours on our site, uh, which you can find at rc.org. Um, so we don't have any questions right now. Let's give everyone a few minutes to maybe get their questions together and typed in for the Q&A. Until uh, everyone is deciding for the questions, we are open for all the questions can be sent by an email and they will have an immediate answers. Even if you need to have one-to-one -one call for any information that we can share, with all the participants here, we are ready to do that as well. Okay, great. And I did wanna just remind everyone that the webinar is being recorded um, and will be posted on the website in case you wanted to go back and review any of those wonderful slides that Hisham and Yasmin provided um, and to, you know, go back and review any of the tour destinations um, or specific spots on the itinerary. I would like to add something that I would like to commend uh, all the organizers, uh, because of course the tour is 
amazing. There are so many amazing, incredible sites in this tour and the restaurants that were selected <laughs> and the hotels were are very charming. And even City Stars, uh, I taught a, an arch, ancient Egyptian architecture course in ancient Egypt uh, and it was um, used by many students as an example of a modern building that is inspired by ancient Egyptian architecture. So when you stay there, you'll see a lot of ancient Egyptian motifs and architectural elements in city stars. Wonderful. Um, okay, we have another question from Bruce and he asks, are there special rules for women in the monasteries? Yes, mean. Special rules for women, not, not particularly. I, I just don't go in shorts. <laughs> yeah, not like dress modestly. This is my part. Okay. What's the cost of the tour? The price is not listed on the payment slide. Jane, okay, Howard or Jane, the price is already listed on the itinerary that uh, we have circulated to all the participants and will be honored just, uh, uh, Rebecca is gonna be able to send to Howard the itinerary again with all the pricing. Um, yes, yeah, so we'll be sending uh, an email after the webinar um, with that information and the, uh, the itinerary is also posted on RC's website. And the itinerary includes all of the details that we discussed today, as well as pricing, um, the cancellation policy, so everything that you'd need to know. Um, okay, let's give a couple more minutes for a few more questions to come in. Um, I think we did wrap all the questions. Yeah. Unless someone thinks of something else. Roger is coming here. Hisham, while the German opening is not yet set, what's your feeling? I'll tell you, we just heard a rumor yesterday, and it's just a rumor, that they are going to open it in November, but I don't think so. From what's going on, the, the museum is ready. Everything is ready. They just moved the solar boat yesterday to the Grand Egyptian Museum. They are getting ready by everything because it was originally postponed from last year. So it's already ready to be opened, but we don't have any definite information whether this rumor is true or not. I would love to have it open by November, you know, because everybody in the world is really excited about that. But even if it's not open in November, we have no clue when it's gonna open. And I don't want to give you any definite answer about it. But as I said, we but are have replacement, you know. Yeah, and the replacement is very good. Like it's uh, the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization is incredible. And uh, the, it's, uh, it's also very, um, what's special about it is that it's the only museum that traces the Egyptian civilization in its, entire, its entirety, all the different time periods from ancient times, from actually prehistoric times till modern times. So you will learn a lot about Egyptian civilization in general from the National Museum of Egyptian Civilization. Late as well. Um, okay, great. Thank you, uh, Hisham and Yasmin. Um, I don't see any questions rolling in, so we're going to go ahead and end the webinar. Um, if any of you have any questions after this, um, in the email that will follow up, I will post my email that you can ask questions as well as Hisham's um, for any questions that are specific to the tour and the itinerary and logistics. Um, so thank you so much, Hisham and Yasmin, for joining us today for the webinar. And thank you, everybody um, who attended as well. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. And thank Bye. you, all those. Bye-bye. <laughs>